Hello Speed Reno fans and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be giving a, a brief little teaser of the new drop bear unit and one of the testing boards that I'm currently working with. Okay, so a few weeks ago I showed a couple of pictures and gave a couple of the features of a board I've been working on for a little while now that I'm calling the drop bear. And this is it. This is one of the um, early, early testing units for it. It's, it's not a production ready unit by any means, but it is certainly one that, that I can show off a couple of the features so you can see what's coming. Okay, so what is it? It's a Speedwino unit that you'll see is in a nice little, mostly waterproof, I'm, I'm sort of referring to it as weatherproof at this point enclosure with a couple of uh, automotive connectors on it. It's slightly bigger than a, a V0.4 board, coming in at about 100 mil by 130 so a little bit larger the connectors that you'll note on the end is probably the first thing that that you may have seen with it uh delphi sigma connectors and a, a fully waterproof or moisture resistant and the lock-in connectors so i'll show you what that means here here's just a little uh, adapter board that i've been using with my testing adapts to a, a miata plug please do excuse my wiring there it's certainly not the neatest thing in the world but these connectors work by plugging on and then locking into place. Which gives a nice firm grip and they can't come off then. So it's a nice little nifty connector. Fairly simple to work with. Fairly easy to, to crimp in terms of the connector side. So it's not too bad for DIY. I do hope to... Um, be offering some pre-made looms or, or uh, pigtail type harnesses for these once they're on sale. But if you do want to DIY them, it's also not too bad to work with. Okay, so why is this different to, to the existing boards? It differs in a couple of, of pretty significant ways. Let's have a look inside. And the first thing and probably the most significant change that you'll notice is instead of the old Mega 2560 unit, this one is powered by the TC 3.5. I felt that whilst there isn't a critical need for a lot of these features to have this board, if I'm gonna do something that's sort of more self-contained, that's more feature complete, that I was gonna step up and use something a little bit more powerful. It does have the advantage that it can control eight fuel channels and eight ignition channels. And that's exactly what we have on this board. There's eight fuel and eight ignition outputs, which is a step up from the, the four and four, which is on most of the existing Speed Reno boards. The philosophy I've tried to use with this is to include as much on board and ready to go out of the box as I possibly can. And to that end, it's got quite a few things built on. Um, now that this one is, is um, an Alpha 3 board, there is an Alpha 4 board that I've, I've got on the go as well that I haven't had produced yet with a few more pieces than what this one has. But let me run over a couple of the, the different features that this one has. Firstly, it's got an onboard uh, VR conditioner and you can simply switch between VR and hall sensor with this switch here. So there's no jumpers for that which makes it a little bit easier. It's also 12 volt tolerant on the hall input. So really any style of input that you might wanna have will be catered for on board with just flicking that switch and no additional circuitry or, or jumpers or anything required for that. In addition to the eight fuel and eight ignition outputs, it's got six medium current outputs, which are around, I haven't fully tested this, but they're gonna be around 1.5 amps each. Four of those are allocated uh, ostensibly to idle, fan, boost, and VBT with two spare outputs. But as always with Speedwino, uh, these things are configurable. So you can change the functions of those as you see fit. In addition to those, there's a couple of, of lower current outputs such as a, a dedicated taco output and a dedicated fuel pump output in addition to the, the ones I mentioned before. It also has the, um, the optional stepper driver ports here. So you can add the, the usual cheap stepper motor drivers to that if you're, you're running a stepper motor idle. In terms of inputs, it's got most of the, the, the standard ones you'd expect. You can see that it's got two pressure sensors up here, one for barrow and one for map readings. 
again, there's also a pin broken out to the connectors, so you can run an external map connector. And again, that's just got a switch to choose between the two. I'm working on a couple of different designs to, to potentially have plug-in cards with different map sensors on them. But we'll, we'll see how that works out in some of the later designs. But these, these will have map fully on board, as well as the barrow sensor. In terms of the, the other inputs, they've got the normal analog inputs that you'd expect. Inlet air temperature, coolant, TPS, O2, battery voltage. There's also some dedicated inputs here for flex, VSS, a vehicle speed, and clutch inputs. Uh, so those are the, the normal sorts of things that are there and that you, you would expect. There's also two spare analog inputs on it that are broken out to the connectors that can be used for, for different sensors, such as the you know, oil pressure or fuel pressure that's being added at the moment. It does also allow for quite a bit of future expansion here. There is a CAN circuit on board, which is broken out again to the connector. And there's also the SD card that's on the TNC itself. Now, much of this isn't finalized in the firmware yet or, or ready to go in the firmware. But all of that, I want to get, include the, the hardware here as much as possible, and I will include the, the firmware support for it down the track. A lot of what I'm working through at the moment is really testing these circuits because many of these are, are really brand new circuits. They're, they're very different to um, what you would get on, on some of the existing boards, in particular the, the fuel and ignition. And also a lot of the work on the physical layout of this. That's probably one of the most challenging areas that I've had is, is making a nice package that will work that's going to be user friendly. As an example of that, uh, I'm, I'm getting these custom uh, waterproof cables made. Now these will, will be the intent here is that these will uh, plug onto the Teensy, if I can get that in there. And come around and mount on the side here like this. You can see there's a little notch, and you might be able to see there, there's a little notch in the board that that mounts in, uh, and that'll create a, a completely waterproof seal out for USB. Creating those USB connections, I guess, has been one of the, the more challenging parts of, of the physical layout, and some similar sorts of things go for the, the two map connections as well. There's still a lot of work to be done on these, and they're not ready even for a beta yet, but I am hoping to have that ready to go in, in maybe a month or so's time. There's probably going to be one more alpha test board before I'm, I'm ready to release that. But I did just want to give a, a little bit of a sneak preview of what's inside one of these, what they look at look like, um, what the intent of the board and what the intent of the unit is actually going to be. And hopefully uh, everyone ex is as excited as me about the opportunities that, these, that will come with these new boards. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been of interest to you. If you've got any feature suggestions for the, the drop bear, by all means, leave them below in the comments or let me know. I'm happy to look at them. It's still in development, so things can still certainly change. But hopefully this has been of interest to you. Thanks, everyone.